Hello, it's Saturday the 14th of uh, May. You're tuned in to our 6pm newscast coming to you from Adidang's News Centre in Seoul. It's very good to have you with us. I'm Mark Broom. Our top story this evening, Korea is marking Buddha's birthday at temples around the country. To mark the occasion, Korea's largest Buddhist sect held a ceremony in the capital. President Park Geun-hye also sent a message wishing for peace and happiness. Park ji won starts us off. Around 10,000 people attended a ceremony to celebrate Buddha's 2560th birthday at the Joge Temple in central Seoul. The highlight of the hour-long service was the message of celebration delivered by the Venerable Chaseng, head of the Joge Order of Korean Buddhism, the country's largest Buddhist sect. He called on people to put down selfishness and reflect on themselves with merciful minds, stressing that people need to realize they are not separate beings but are actually one in the end. He also emphasized that people need to keep richness in the minds of community and move away from the bountifulness of materials. President Park Geun-hye also sent a message, which was read by Cultural Minister Kim jong dok the president says she hoped Buddha's teachings enlighten people's minds and bring true peace and happiness to the country. Heavyweight politicians, including the leaders of Korea's main political parties, like the ruling Senori Party's Jung jin Seok, the Minju Party's Kim Jong-in, the People's Party co-leader An chul Su, and Justice Party leader Shim Sang-jung attended the ceremony at the Joge Temple. They hope to win the hearts of the nation's Buddhists, who constitute around a fifth of Korea's total population. Some 20,000 temples across Korea have also been celebrating the day, remembering Buddha's teachings. Park ji Arirang News. So, as we just heard in that report, various events and celebrations have been and are being held across Korea to mark Buddha's birthday. For a look at the importance of the day and a lantern festival held in central Seoul, Ijiwon reports. Korea is celebrating Buddha's 2560th birthday, and to mark the occasion, various events are being held in central Seoul, with bright and colorful decorations lighting up the city's Buddhist temples. During this season, more people visit the temples to cleanse their minds and souls. Buddha taught us the righteous way of living, and I am really thankful for that. It's also nice to come here with my daughter. With a history spanning 1,600 years, Buddhism is a major religion in Korea with an estimated 10 million Buddhists in the country. The government designated the day as a public holiday in 2005. But Sokatanjinil, as Koreans call it, has a much deeper meaning. One of Buddha's greatest teachings is that people need to do good deeds. People are aware of such teachings but are too stressed to practice them. So Buddha's birthday gives us the opportunity to embrace it and reflect on our lives. One of the major events on Buddha's birthday is the Lantern Festival. With the meaning of enlightenment and symbolizing hope, lanterns are lit and hung during this season. And like every other year, ornate lanterns of all shapes and sizes light up the paths along the Cheonggyecheon stream in northern Seoul. Made with colorful traditional hanji paper, the lanterns portray traditional Korea and Buddhism. Couples, families and friends stop by to admire the entrancing lanterns. It's a festive event that provides more enjoyment on Buddha's birthday. Lee Ji-won, Arirang News. Now in other news, the former chiefs of companies that manufacture toxic humidifier sterilizers have been arrested. They face charges of making the products that cause the deaths and lung conditions of hundreds of people in Korea. Those arrested were the former CEO of Oxyrecit Benkiza's Korean branch, Shin hyun two other researchers from the same company, and the former head of a small manufacturer of a similar toxic sterilizer. Shin is charged with approving production without conducting tests to check whether the substances were safe. These are the first arrests made since the prosecution started their investigations in January and come five years after the scandal first hit the headlines. Five North Korean ships have reportedly been on the move for the first time since UN sanctions grounded them around one month ago. Citing an online vessel tracking program, Voice of America reports that the ships, which 
all belong to uh, the North Korean firm Ocean Maritime Management, have sailed through the West Sea and waters near Japan and China over the past 10 days. In retaliation of North Korea's fourth nuclear test in January and a long-range missile launch the following month, the UN Security Council adopted its strongest ever resolution on Pyongyang, which blacklisted the North Korean firm's vessels. The report said the five ships may not have just been sailing between North Korean ports, given that they were detected in waters near China and Japan. Now, The Economist has been busy working out how the two careers would benefit from becoming one. The, the British Economic Weekly notes how the cost of reunion would be absolutely staggering by conservative estimates around one trillion US dollars or three quarters of South Korea's annual GDP. It points out that while that is extremely expensive, the South would merge with a population in the North that is younger and has almost twice as many babies. That would be a, a demographic boon. Uh, South Korea's working age population begins to shrink from next year. The Economist report says South Korea would also reap a windfall in reserves of rare earth minerals, which are used in electronics as well. On the negative side, though, the report said South Korea's social security system would need to provide for 25 million North Koreans, many of them brutalized and malnourished, and including tens of thousands of people in the North's political prison camps. U.S. President Barack Obama has lauded the Nordic nations for their global influence on civil rights, humanitarian issues and curbing climate change. Obama and the leaders of Sweden, Denmark, Finland, Norway and Iceland met at the White House on Friday local time for talks that mostly centered around Russia and its recent military aggression in Ukraine and the Baltic region. Experts say the summit was aimed in part at sending a message to Moscow which annexed Crimea in 2014 and has stepped up its military posture. Denmark and Norway said Friday that they will contribute toward a build-up of NATO forces in North and Eastern Europe to counter Russia. The United States is monitoring reports that the Islamic State group has declared a state of emergency in its self-declared capital of Raqqa. Posts on social media and news reports suggest ISIS forces in the Syrian city may be under siege. Colonel Steve Warren, spokesman for the US-led anti-ISIS coalition, says Washington is trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, but uh, what they do know is that the militant group feels under threat. Media reports have indicated that ISIS is moving personnel around Raqqa and attempting uh, to uh, shield potential targets from airstrikes and ground attacks. A Korean research team has developed a cactus-inspired skin that could significantly improve the efficiency of electric cars. The finding is expected to improve fuel cell performance and transform the EV industry. Park se has the details. Hydrogen fuel vehicles offer environmental benefits with the convenience of quick refueling times. But the cells need to stay hydrated to sustain performance, requiring the addition of radiators and humidifiers that take up space and consume power. To resolve these issues, researchers from Korea's Hanyang University and Australia's National Science Agency CSIRO developed a vehicle exterior that works in a similar way to a cactus plant. The membrane has tiny cracks just like a cactus does that widen in humid conditions and close when it is drier. This means the fuel cells can stay hydrated without all the bulky equipment. The researchers also found that the membrane improved the efficiency of the cells in hot, dry conditions by a factor of four. The new membrane is similar in terms of performance to existing ones made of fluorine-related materials, but they are now durable in high temperatures. The new membranes are free of fluorine, which can form compounds that are harmful to the environment. They're also expected to reduce hydrogen fuel cell production costs to one-tenth the current price. The finding was published in April in the scientific journal Nature. Park Se-young, Arirang News. Now, finally, as we normally do, we are going to take a brief look at the weather. And most of the country is under clear skies this evening. It's going to be relatively mild tonight, with the overnight low dipping to uh, 13 degrees Celsius in Seoul. Sunday will be slightly cooler than today, and we will have rain in the evening pretty much uh, across the country on Sunday. Next week is going to be sunny, dry, 
and very warm with daytime highs in the mid to upper 20s all week. With that, let's take a look at the weather around the world. Well, that's all we have for now. Do enjoy the rest of your Saturday wherever you're watching us and stay tuned to Adidang TV. We'll be back. Our next newscast is coming up at 10pm Korea time. So until then, goodbye.